On August 17, 1945, near the end of World War II, Indonesia declared its independence with Sukarno as its first president. But after the war, the Netherlands wanted to return to recolonize the Dutch East Indies. A four-year war ensued between Indonesia and the Netherlands. But on December 27, 1949, the Netherlands gave up and agreed to recognize Indonesia as a sovereign country. However, the Netherlands continued to hold on to West New Guinea, which Indonesia felt was a continuation of Dutch colonialism. Because of this and Indonesia's bitter independence war against the Netherlands, President Sukarno maintained a staunchly anti-imperialist and anti-colonial foreign policy. Sukarno was also a founding leader of the non-aligned movement, comprising countries that advocated strict neutrality during the ongoing Cold War between the United States and the Soviet Union. Consequently, Indonesia forged closer relations with the Soviet Union and other communist countries while also maintaining diplomatic ties with the United States and other democratic states. In its early years, Indonesia experienced many regional rebellions that threatened the country's survival. As a result, Sukarno implemented the system of guided democracy, which eroded Indonesia's democratic system and allowed the president to gain authoritarian powers. Civil rights were restricted and political and press freedoms were curtailed. Sukarno abolished Congress and installed a rubber stamp legislature that appointed him as Indonesia's president for life. Subsequently, Sukarno established close ties with local communists of the Indonesian Communist Party, which led to deteriorating Indonesian-West relations and Sukarno drawing even closer to communist countries. Even so, Sukarno was able to draw the support of the right-wing Indonesian armed forces. Meanwhile, the present-day country of Malaysia began as the Federation of Malaya, which gained its independence on August 31, 1957 under the auspices of Britain, its colonial master. Then in May 1961, Britain and Malaya agreed to merge into Malaya, the state of Singapore as well as the British territories in Borneo, which comprised the colonies of Sarawak and North Borneo and the British Protectorate of Brunei, with a new combined political entity to be called the Federation of Malaysia. President Sukarno was opposed to the formation of Malaysia for a number of reasons. First, he believed that Malaysia would be subservient to British interests and Britain would dominate Malaysia in a neo-colonial capacity. This scenario would run counter to Sukarno's anti-imperialist and anti-colonial foreign policy. Second, Sukarno wanted British Borneian territories to be formed as a separate country, the state of North Kalimantan, a socialist state governed by the North Kalimantan Communist Party, which would be aligned with and even fall under Indonesia's sphere of influence. And third, such a scenario would be partial realization of Greater Indonesia, a pre-World War II and wartime concept among Indonesian nationalists who envisioned an independent Indonesian state that would comprise the territories of the Dutch East Indies and the British possessions in Malaya and North Borneo. However, during the course of the Indonesian-Malaysian confrontation, Sukarno did not declare Greater Indonesia or the annexation of North Borneian territories as his aims for carrying out armed action against Malaysia. The Philippines also opposed the formation of Malaysia as it had territorial claims to North Borneo. With tensions rising, in early 1963, Indonesia and Malaya agreed to hold a plebiscite to determine the political aspirations of the people of North Borneo and Sarawak. Both agreed to respect the results of the plebiscite. Earlier in August 1962, a British commission, after visiting North Borneo and Sarawak to determine the residents' political aspirations, concluded that widespread support for joining Malaysia existed in these territories. On July 9, 1963, Malaya set the date for the formation of Malaysia on August 31, 1963. With increasing diplomatic pressure from Indonesia and the Philippines, the three sides met and signed the Manila Accord on July 31, 1963, where they agreed to refer the matter to the United Nations, which they asked to undertake a consensus of the residents of North Borneo and Sarawak with regards to these territories' political future. On September 14, 1963, the UN released its report, which determined that the residents of North Borneo and Sarawak favored joining Malaysia.
Two days later, on September 16, 1963, Malaysia, officially called the Federation of Malaysia, was formed from the merger of the Federation of Malaya, Singapore, North Borneo, and Sarawak. Brunei decided not to join because of political and economic reasons. Relations between Indonesia and Malaysia quickly deteriorated as Indonesia did not recognize the new state. In Jakarta, Indonesia's capital, the embassies of Malaysia and Britain were attacked and the Malaysian ambassador was expelled, and anti-Malaysia demonstrations broke out. In Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia's capital, reciprocal actions took place, with rioters attacking the Indonesian embassy. Meanwhile, in the Philippines, the government also refused to recognize Malaysia, leading to severe diplomatic ties between the two countries. Fighting had actually begun several months before Malaysia was formed as heightened tensions in British North Borneo led to the outbreak of hostilities. In December 1962, a rebel group launched an uprising in Brunei to overthrow the Sultanate and seize power. The uprising, which was secretly backed by Indonesia, was repulsed by British forces. The rebels retreated to Kalimantan where they joined other anti-Malaysia communist groups and launched cross-border raids into Malaysia. The rebels received weapons and training from the Indonesian army. After the failed rebel attack on Brunei, in January 1963, Indonesia declared confrontasi or confrontation against the proposed Malaysia. And on July 9, 1963, when the date was set for the formation of Malaysia, on July 27, 1963, Sukarno declared a campaign to crush Malaysia, or Ganyang Malaysia, which was a political, economic, and propaganda offensive to degrade Malaysia. On September 17, 1963, Malaysia cut diplomatic relations with Indonesia. Indonesia retaliated on September 23, 1963 by ending trade relations with Malaysia. Malaysia and the Philippines also suspended bilateral relations. Confrontasi had already begun in April 1963 when Indonesia armed Sarawak rebels crossed from Nangabadan, Kalimantan into Sarawak and one group attacked a police station in Tebedu and another raided a border village in western Sarawak. Indonesia-based infiltrations into Sarawak and Sabah, the latter renamed from North Borneo, involved platoon-sized units carrying light weapons which launched hit-and-run attacks on enemy targets and armed raids as well as carrying out propaganda campaigns in the settlements and villages. By 1964, the Indonesian army became directly involved in the fighting. On the Malaysian side, the British Army and Malaysian troops and later Australian and New Zealand contingents formed the defensive forces, whose operations consisted of confronting and repelling the Indonesian attacks. Confrontasi was a low-intensity conflict that took place in extremely difficult conditions as the 1,000-mile border and much of the island between Kalimantan and Malaysian Borneo was deep jungle mountains covered with thick forests and dense vegetation with seasonal heavy rains and intersected by many rivers, these natural barriers greatly reducing troop movements. The second half of 1964 marked the most intense phase of the war starting in July when the Indonesian army, by now carrying out and leading most of the cross-border infiltrations, launched many incursions into Malaysian Borneo. On August 14, 1964, the conflict expanded into peninsular Malaysia when Indonesian commandos made a seaborne crossing over the Malacca Strait and made amphibious landings south of Johor. British and Malaysian forces contained the intrusion. Then on September 2, 1964, Indonesian Air Force transport planes airdropped 96 paratroopers in Labis near Johor. This attack was also stopped, with most of the paratroopers killed or captured. Then in September 1964, Indonesia and Britain nearly came to war when a British fleet was denied passage through the Sunda Strait. Britain had been so alarmed by the attacks on Malaya that it resolved to carry out a show of force to deter further Indonesian intrusions. War was adverted when Indonesia allowed the British fleet to pass through Lombok Strait. In July 1964, Britain implemented Operation Claret, a clandestine counteroffensive to be launched into Kalimantan aimed at preempting the Indonesian army's cross-border infiltrations. 
British Special Forces, later including those of Australia and New Zealand, carried out infiltration operations into Kalimantan to seek out and locate Indonesian forces that were about to launch cross-border attacks into Malaysian Borneo. With the enemy positions pinpointed, regular British and Malaysian combat forces were sent to contain these Indonesian units before the latter could launch their attack. Operation Claret was highly successful, with the special forces penetrating deep into Kalimantan with virtual impunity and ultimately forcing the Indonesian army to stop making further intrusions into Malaysian Borneo. The British combat success led to increased tensions between President Sukarno and the Indonesian military. Furthermore, by 1965, Sukarno had lost much of his once formidable popular support because of a severe economic crisis caused by high inflation, widespread poverty and unemployment, high foreign debt, and neglected infrastructures and development. Ultimately, Indonesia's internal problems would force an end to the war. Furthermore, Sukarno's two power bases, the military and the communists, long distrusted each other. Indonesian military officers also began to oppose the war because of the growing strength of the communists, whose numbers had increased to some 3 million members by 1965, which was viewed as a potential threat, especially since the military was preoccupied with the war. Then on September 30, 1965, a failed coup attempt on Sukarno led the military to accuse the communists of initiating the coup to seize power. What followed was a brutal campaign of extermination against the communists, with some 500,000 to as high as 1 million communists killed and about 1.5 million others imprisoned. As a result, Sukarno's authority was fatally undermined. In early 1966, anti-Sukarno demonstrations broke out in Jakarta. In March 1967, Sukarno was impeached as president and placed under house arrest. Internal turmoil compelled the Indonesian military to divert its attention away from confrontasi and Indonesia's conflict with Malaysia gradually subsided. Nevertheless, cross-border incursions from both sides persisted during the first half of 1966, including some intense fighting that occurred in Kalimantan in March between Indonesian and British units. In May and June 1966, the Indonesians and Sarawak rebels launched unsuccessful offensives just as the conflict was winding down. On May 28, 1966, Indonesian and Malaysian representatives agreed to a peace treaty, which was signed in Bangkok, Thailand, three months later, on August 11, whose stipulations included an end to hostilities and establishing diplomatic relations between the two countries. Meanwhile, the Philippines had much earlier, in May 1964, resumed normal diplomatic relations with Malaysia and placed on hold its territorial claim to Sabah in favor of regional political security and closer economic cooperation.